Good day everyone. Our topic for today is all about fundamental counting principle. So let's start. So what is fundamental counting principle? The fundamental counting principle, also called the counting rule, is a way to figure out the number of outcomes in an event. So let's say for example, meron kang 5 shorts and 3 shirts. Now ang tanong, how many different outfits can you make? So pause for a moment and think and the answer is how many different outfits the answer is 15 different outfits now paano nangyari naging 15 so again meron tayong 5 short pangalanan natin as short a short b short c and short d short e now yung short a pwede natin siyang ipares dun sa tatlong magkakaibang short so short 1 short 2 and short number 3 so meron ka ng tatlong outfits Next, yung short B, pwede mong i-partner din sa tatlong shirt. So, shirt 1, shirt 2, shirt 3. So, meron ka ng anim na different outfits. Ganun din yung gagawin natin sa short C. Sa tatlo ulit na shirt. Sa short D, ganun din. At sa short E, ganun din. So, in total, we have 15 different outfits. Now, is there a way na makakarating tayo sa 15 different outfits gamit lang yung 5 shorts and 3 shirts? So, ano yung gagawin natin sa 5 and 3 to make it 15? Meron kayong shortcut doon? And the answer is meron. If we multiply 5 and 3, we get 15. And that's the idea of fundamental counting principle. So, anong sabi doon? When there are m ways to do one thing and n ways to do another, there are m times n ways of doing both. Now, let's say another example. Meron kang 7 shirt, 3 pants, and 2 shoes. Now, according to fundamental counting principle, there are 7 times 3 times 2 different outfits. Therefore, you have 7 times 2 times 3 or simply 42 different outfits. And we're done. Now, let's have another example about fundamental counting principle. Now, suppose... You forgot your 4-digit PIN code. O, wag naman sana. Kung sa cellphone mo yun, 4-digit PIN code na kalimutan mo, syempre, hindi mo yan ma-open. Ang pinaganda nito, habang gumagawa ka ng PIN code, meron kang mga kinonsider. At ito, hindi mo makakalimutan. So, gumamit ka lang ng digits from 1 to 5. So, hindi ka gumamit ng 0. Hindi ka gumamit ng 6, 7, 8, and 9. Also, yung first digit, you know for sure na hindi siya number 1. Now, ito ngayon ang tanong. Ilang PIN code yung kailangan mong i-check para mabuksan mo ulit yung iyong cellphone. Now, paano natin yung gagawin? So, una, meron tayong apat na digits para sa ating PIN code. Now, ito yung mga options natin. Gumamit lang tayo ng digits from 1 to 5. So, yung options natin must be 1 to 5 lang. Now, dun sa ating first digit, we know this is not 1. So, ilan na lang yung option natin para dun sa first digit. So, yun ay from 2, 3, 4, and 5 na lang. So, meron na lang tayong 4 options para dun sa first digit natin. Next, sa second digit, ilan yung option na meron tayo? So, again, we use digits from 1 to 5. So, walang restriction. So, ibig sabihin, silang 5 ay pwede. Pwede maging 1 yan, maging 2, 3, 4, or 5. So, meron tayong 5 options para sa second digit. Meron din tayong 5 options para sa third digit kasi wala namang restriction dito. Ganon din sa pang-apat. Now, according to fundamental counting principle, the total number of PIN codes na kailangan mong i-check must be 4 times 5 times 5 times 5 or simply 500 PIN codes. And you're done. Now, after mong i-try yung 500 different PIN codes na yon, for sure, isa dyan ang makapagbukas ng iyong cellphone. Okay, so let's have another example. Siguro naman, pamilyar kayo dyan, yan ay plate number. Now, ang tanong, how many plate numbers are there in this format? So, we know, meron tayo dito ang apat na digit para sa number. Next, meron tayong two digit para sa ating letters. Next, ito yung mga option natin. Para sa digit, we can use 0 to 9. Pwede yung puro 0 yan, pwede yung puro 1, and so on and so forth. Next, this sa ating letters, we can use A to Z. So, A and I, 26 letters. Now, ilan yung options natin para sa first digit? If walang restriction. Ito ay 10. Kasi from 0 to 9. 10 digits yan. 
Next, sa second digit, meron din tayong 10 options from 0 to 9. Sa third digit, meron din tayong 10 options. At sa pang-apat, meron din tayong 10 options. Again, ito ay walang restriction. Okay? Next, dun sa letters naman, ilan yung options natin para sa first letter? Ito ay 26. Kaya yan, 26. Next letter natin, wala rin restriction. So, ito ay 26 options pa rin. Now, according to fundamental counting principle, the total number of plate numbers in this format must be 10 times 10 times 10 times 26 times 26 and this is equivalent to 6,760,000. Therefore, there are 6,760,000 different plates in this format. And we're done. Now, let's have another example. In a certain photo booth, they are asked to line up for a photograph. So, silang lima. And the question is, how many different arrangements are possible? Now, since hindi natin sila kilala, pangalan na natin siya as person A, person B, person C, person D, and person E. Yung pagkakatayo nila na yan, isa na yung arrangement. Now, pag pinagpalit na natin si person B kay person A, ibang arrangement na yun. Pag pinagpalit natin si C sa kasi D, ibang arrangement na yun. Pag pinagpalit natin si person E sa si person A, ibang arrangement na naman yun. Ang tanong, ilang different arrangement ang posible. So, paano natin gagawin yun? So, sila ay lima. So, gawa tayo ng five lines. Five position. Now, dun sa first position, ilan yung option na meron tayo? Since lima sila, meron tayong five options na pwedeng pumunta sa unahan. Pwede si person A, person B, person C, person D, person E. Okay? Next. Now, since nakapwesto na yung isa dito sa ating first position, mababawasan na yung option natin para dun sa second position. No kung yung isa ay nakapwesto na, ilan na lang yung option natin para sa second position. So, yun ay apat na lang. Okay? Now, dalawa na yung nakatayo sa ating line. Ilan na lang yung option natin para sa pangatlong position. So, yun ay tatlo na lang kasi nabawasan na ng dalawa. May dalawa na kasing nakapila. Next. Kung tatlo na sila nakapila, ilan na lang yung option mo para dun sa pang-apat na position. So, yun ay dalawa na lang. And then, for the last position, meron ka na lang isang natitira. Now, according to fundamental counting principle, there are 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, or simply, 120. Therefore, there are 120 different arrangements are possible para sila ay mag-line up sa photograph. Na meron question dito, Sir, bakit nabawasan ulit yung option? Okay, i-analyze natin mabuti. Kung lima sila, at papipilahin mo sila isa-isa, so meron kang limang option para dun sa first position. So, let's say for example, si person A yun. Okay? So, pwede person A, pwede si person B, pwede person C, pwede si person D, or si person E. So, kahit alin sa lima na yan. So, example lang si person A. So, automatic nakapila na siya. Now, since nakapila na si person A, hindi mo siya pwedeng ulitin ulit sa second position. So, magkakadalawa siya. Eh, isa lang siya. Unless kung siya ay nagkakagibong siyang technique, dumadami siya, di ba? Since isa lang si person A, hindi na natin siya pwedeng isa masabilang dun sa second option. So, hindi naman pwedeng tumayo dyan sa linya ay puro si person A lang. Kasi nga, lima silang magkakaibang tao. Nakukuha yung idea. So, again, pag kumuha ka ng isa, nabawasan na yung option mo para dun sa pangalawa. Nung dalawa na yung nakapila, nabawasan na yung option mo dun sa pangatong posisyon, and so on, and so forth. Now, in general, there are 120 arrangements of 5 unique items. So, ginawa kong 5 unique items. Pwede kasi na ang given natin ay 5 different cards, 5 different marbles. So, hindi lang applicable para sa 5 person. So, pwede rin siya sa 5 different fruits, and so on, and so forth. Okay? Now, let's move on to another example. If you have 9 different books, ito na naman yung word na different. How many different arrangements, ito na naman yung word na arrangements, are possible? Now, suppose, yung books mo ay nandun sa table at meron kang bookshelf. Now, kailangan mo siyang i-arrange dun sa bookshelf, yung 9 different books. Now, para sa first position, kailangan mo mamili ng isa dun sa siyam. So, ibig sabihin, para dun sa first position dun sa bookshelf, meron kang 9 option. Now, kumuha ka ng isa, nilagay mo dun sa bookshelf, ilan na lang yung option mo para dun sa pangalawang position. 
Siyempre, nabawasan na ng isa yung libro doon sa table. So, ilan na lang sila? Wala na lang. So, meron ka na lang 8 option para doon sa second position. Now, sa pangatlong position, nabawasan na ng dalawa yung libro doon sa table mo. So, meron ka na lang pito doon. So, meron ka na lang 7 option. And pabawas siya ng pabawas. So, magiging 6, magiging 5, magiging 4, magiging 3, magiging 2, magiging 1. So, therefore, the total number of different arrangements according to fundamental counting principle is equivalent to 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 or simply 362,880 different arrangements. And we're done. Now, paano kapag ang given sa atin ay 100 different books? Sulat ba natin yung 100 times 99 times 98 hanggang makarun tayo sa 1? And ako, hindi ko gagawin yun. Kaya, meron tayo ngayong bagong notation. So, kapag meron tayong nakita na number in this format, 9 multiplied by 8, pabawas ng pabawas hanggang makarating sa 1, meron tayong notation na pwedeng gamitin. So, for example, 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, this can be written as... 9 exclamation point. Or simply, binabasa natin siya as 9 factorial. Hindi yan, no! Hindi yan galit, okay? Hindi rin yan nagwawalang 9. Okay? Yan ay 9 factorial. Now, for any set of n different items, there are n factorial different arrangements possible. So, ito yung ating idea. For any set of n different items, for example, ito ay 11 different books, so, meron tayong 11 factorial different arrangements possible. Kung meron tayong 95 different roots, there are 95 factorial different arrangements possible. So, no need to compute gano karami yung 95 factorial, but we can rewrite 95 times 94 times 93 up to 1 in a single notation which is 95 factorial. Okay? Now, let's talk about factorial. So, what is a factorial? In mathematics, the product of all positive integers less than or equal to a given positive integer. Yun ay factorial. Or simply, factorial says to multiply all whole numbers from the chosen number down to 1. For example, yung 1 factorial is equivalent to 1. Yung 2 factorial is equivalent to 2 times 1. Again, tandaang mabuti na kinocompute natin dito is yung different arrangement of n different things. So, if we have two different things, meron tayong two different arrangements possible. Okay? If we have three different things, we have three times two times one or three factorial different ways or simply ito ay six ways. Kung meron tayong four different things, meron tayong four times three times two times one or simply 24. Kung meron tayong 5 different things, ito ay 5 factorial, we have 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, or simply 120. If we have 6 different items na i-arrange, ito ay 720. If we have 7 different items, meron tayong 7 factorial, or simply 5,040. Now, merong nawawala dun sa ating pattern. How about 0 factorial? What is the equivalent of 0 Factorial. Now again, yung concept natin is nag arrange tayo ng different things. Now the question is, how many ways can you arrange zero thing? And the answer is, just one way. Do nothing. So zero factorial is equal to one. Now syempre, hindi ka agad maniniwala. Sir, bakit zero factorial is equal to one? Now syempre, medyo confusing yung zero factorial is equal to one. Now suppose, papasok ka sa isang kwarto at meron ka lang isang bagay na nakita doon, isang object. Now, ilang way mo pwede i-arrange yun? So, obviously, one way lang. Now, kahit naman iusad mo yung isang object na yun, isang arrangement lang din naman siya. Okay? Pwede mong iusad or pwede you can do nothing at all. Hayaan mo lang siya na nakatayo or hayaan mo lang siya dun sa kanyang position. Therefore, meron ka isang way para i-arrange yung isang object. Now, paano pagpasok mo sa kwarto at wala kang nakita? Ilang arrangement yung pwede mong gawin doon? And the answer is, one way. Just do nothing at all. Okay? So, kapag may nakita kang dalawang objects, pwede mo siyang pagbalik ta rin ng position and magkaibang arrangement na yun. Kaya meron kang two different arrangements. Okay? And so on and so forth. 
na kung hindi ka pa convinced na ang zero factorial is equal to 1, ito pa yung isang way kung paano natin siya ipapakita. So, we will use patterns. So, simula natin sa 7 factorial. Alam natin na ito ay 5,040. 6 factorial is 720. 5 factorial is 120. And so on and so forth. Until we reach 0 factorial na wala pa tayong value. Now, from 5,040, paano kaya siya naging 720? Ito yung idea. I-divide yan by 7. 5,040 divided by 7 is 720. Now, paano yan naging 120? From 720, naging 120, dinibide yan by 6. 720 divided by 6 is 120. 120, paano naging 24, dinibide sa 5? 24, paano naging 6, dinibide sa 4? 6, paano naging 2, dinibide sa 3? 2, paano naging 1, dinibide sa 2? Now, ito na kayo yung critical point. Ano ngayon yung kasunod? 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Susunod, i-divide natin by 1. So, 1 divided by 1, the answer is 1. Therefore, 0 factorial is equal to 1. So, clearly, 0 factorial is equal to 1. But before we end, meron lang tayong konting trivia. Kapag kumuha kayo ng calculator at tinipe nyo yung 69 factorial, iyan na yung pinakamataas na number na pwede makompute ng inyong calculator. Yung 70 factorial, hindi na niya kaya yung computein. So yung pinakamataas na number na kayang computein ng inyong calculator is 69 factorial. And, dito ang katapos, we're done.